right, so that's got my reinforcement in there. Now let me go back to the directions. So now from here we've done do the straight stitch on the outside. Do the tight zigzag stitch, I'm sorry. So step eight is done. All right, now. Now we're going to use the chair top template uh, to trace a stitch pattern onto the seven inch side using a permanent marker or a sewing marker. Um, the permanent marker is what I'm saying is so that if whatever marker you use, if it wasn't permanent, it might bleed and make a mess. So that's why I state permanent. It doesn't really need to be, but the better thing to use is an actual sewing marker. Let me see if I have one sitting out. I do not. So we're gonna use a permanent marker. And my template is right here. I have taken, I, I created a PDF of the, um, of the pattern for this, and that's with the instructions. <clears throat> it's on printed on 11 by 17 paper to make it large enough. This is a little too big to fit on 8.5 by 11. Uh, so you want to take the 7 inch side with your hem at the bottom. Let me, let me reposition myself here. So maybe I can do this. Let's see if that works. Um, so this is my seven inch side. Again, I am paranoid that I'll do it on the wrong side, so I wanna check it. So there it is, seven inches. No, you can't see that. Come over here. There's my seven inches. So now I'm gonna take my template and just visually center it on either side. I think I can't really show you that. Let me try repositioning again. Can you see the whole piece? Almost. But I'm, I'm essentially just trying to get the top edge of this centered and looking at the bottom along the hem. And I'm going to trace, let's see, the edge in there. Let's see, can you see? I think that's about right. Okay. And I just need a light line so that it's easy to follow on the sewing machine. Okay. And then come over to this side. Make sure the top edge is about following that edge and trace it. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to do a straight stitch where we will follow this edge. Okay, so then I can see from my, my picture has, shows you the lines on there as well. Step 10, straight stitch over the markings. Do not stitch over the hem. Um, don't remember why I decided not to. Now I'm thinking it's probably a good idea to stitch that way. Wait a second. At this point, you can add some straight pins if you think that would help to hold it in there a little better. But I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna add the straight pins. It's up to you as to whether or not you feel like you, you want them to help hold it all together. Okay. Now, actually, almost forgot, we have all the settings set for zigzag now, so we need to go back. So I'm going to set it to straight stitch again with a zero width and a normal length. I think I had it mine at about three and a half. My dial goes from zero to four. Everybody's sewing machines are different, but I'm sewing at about a three and a half, and my width I want at zero because I do not want to do 
the zigzags anymore. Now I changed my tension, so I'm gonna change that back from four to six. And I see that I've almost lost my thread again. Okay. All right, now I'm ready. Um, but before I actually go start stitching, I am gonna go ahead and test it to make sure I've got all my settings right. This row of stitching, if you can see that, looks good there, and the back side looks good. Always remember to check your back, the back side of the fabric, it's the stitches on the back side. So now we're ready to stitch over the line. A few back stitches, and then going forward. You recommend that you go slowly. It is kind of difficult to stay on a line that's a curve. It's much easier, in my opinion, to sew a straight line. Make sure you remember to zig, um, reverse stitch. the tails from where I just stitched. Okay, so there we go. I have stitched over that line. Um, I think it would be a really good idea to get so um, like it's a, a sewing marker. The, they're usually in blue. There's probably other colors out there. But if you draw the line with one of these sewing markers, once it's done, you can take a tiny bit of water and run across there and it all just goes away, vanishes, and cleans it all up. Now this one, you're gonna be able to see it, but when we flip it inside out, you won't. But generally, this is very frowned upon, I think by most sewists. If they saw me telling you to use a permanent marker to draw the line, they probably wouldn't appreciate that. Um, I'm doing what I think is faster, I guess. Um, all right, so now we gotta do the other side. Reverse stitch. And when I get to the curve, I really want to slow down to try to stay on that line as much as possible. And go all the way to the edge. Do a couple of reverse stitches. There we go. here and cut these off. Back to the instructions. Oh, now we're going to zigzag stitch along the outside the same way we did on the others, um, on the bottom side where we did the zigzag stitches here. Now we're going to come up here and do them along on this side on the outside edge of the straight stitches. So I got to set my put my settings back. So I want to go to a wide zigzag with a tight length, which I'm putting back to 1 and going to the 4 on my tension. Might be a good idea the first time you do this and figure out what all those settings are is to go ahead and write them down so that you remember what the settings are for zigzag and what they should be for the straight stitching. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here, reverse stitch a couple, and then go forward. Just as a reminder, the zigzagging is to prevent the unraveling, and it doesn't prevent it completely, it just prevents it from getting close to these straight stitches. And now, because 
because of how wide the zigzag is, I can't get all the way to the end. So I'll stop a little before the end. There we go. So I've done the zigzag on the outside of the line and stopped it before. I was straight stitched all the way to here, but I had to stop the zigzag here. So now I'll come back to this side and do the same thing. few back stitches. There we go and come back here and clip the threads off. All right, so that was step 11. We did the zigzagging. Now 12. Trim the fabric just past the outside edge of the zigzag stitches and then we're going to flip the pouch right side out. So I'm going to take, uh, let me see, let me back my camera up and straighten it out a little bit so you can see more of the fabric. Okay. So I've got my hem here. This is the top one. If I flip it over, I'll show you. There's the back side here, top one here. So just above the old hem, I'm going to cut, I mean, not the old, the top hem, over to the zigzag stitches up here. And then I'm going to follow along those zigzag stitches. Go a little bit past and make sure you don't hit any of the zigzag stitches. Okay, so there we go, I have one done. Now I'm gonna to go to the other side. And I'll start over here. Now we have, let's see, can I 